webs. Pokemon, man, man, the journey's just begun. All right, we're taking a look at Pokemon Snap. This comes at a time when we didn't have these. Cell phones. Yeah, wait. <laughs> Selfie. Um, back in the day, we had these huge honking things called cameras. And they'd cover up your face, and you'd be going around, and you'd take pictures with it. And when you ran out of film, you couldn't go back and delete them. You couldn't even review anything you took. Instead, what you had to do is, is take it into a place, get them developed, and within a week or so, depending on the, on the place you took it, they'd have your film developed. So, But, Pokemon Snap. Is this a good game, bad game, or history lesson? Let's go. Pokemon Snap. Thing I like about this game is that it they were trying something new and bold. Little. This came at a point when Pikachu was everywhere. All right. Pokemon came off of six solid games. They had a TV show, two movies. It's like Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon everywhere. And Poke Fever was wild. The thing about Pokemon is, though, is that while it was running wild, Nintendo even threw it out to, like, they had Pokemon Pinball and Game Boy and stuff. They had Pokemon Hey You Pikachu, which was basically Seaman with Pokemon. So Nintendo, it's like they just didn't know what to do with this IP. So they just farmed it out wherever they could. That's good, that's bad, because when you farm something out like that, you do lose integrity after a while. Look at the Star Wars franchise. A lot of bad Star Wars games out there, guys. So, what, what works here? And let's look at the concept first. As a concept, Pokemon Snap has you going into the wild, going around, taking pictures of Pokemon in their natural habitat. So it's not just the standard... I'm going to capture you, I'm going to breed you, I'm going to force you to battle others, and I'm going to do what I want to do with you. No, this is, this is actually letting Pokemon live in their wild. It's, human. it's green. It's a green game, guys. You're not capturing them. You're not harming their environment. But you are observing them, as researchers do. So it's a green game, guys. That may or may not appeal to people. I mean, after all, you are just going on a tram, taking pictures. It's a shooter on a rails, in a way. And as part of the concept, you get to interact with Pokemon using special items. And so the pictures that you take are based on the pose that they're in, if they're doing something special, if you can catch Pokemon, um, multiple Pokemon in a shot. All this compiles up into a nice score. So as a concept and execution goes on this, um, I'm giving Pokemon Snap a 3 out of 5. Why a 3 out of 5? Professor Oak! Frustrate! I don't like that Oak sits there and he's like, Alright, here's your shot of a Dragonite. Here's your previous shot. I like the new shot better, even though this one was freaking cool because Dragonite's flying at the camera! No! Oak has no eye for good photography. Some of the best shots I've had, he turns around and says, no, your new shot's better. It's like, that's not even a good image of it. That's out of focus. So it does get frustrating when you see Professor Oak constantly giving you feedback, and he, he, he hates the better shots, the ones that... If you were to go National Geographic, these would be the shots that would end up in National Geographic. So, poorly executed on that front. Um, and, I, and again, I can't see everyone loving this game. So that's why I am giving it a 3 out of 5. But the gameplay. Gameplay. Have you played a first-person shooter? Analog to aim. Z trigger to shoot. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you've played any first-person shooter, this is going to be second nature to you. Not much I can say there because it just it works, guys. It really does. It really does work. Um, of course, you get the apple, you get the pokeball, and the poke flute, and using those, you can actually entice Pokemon to do different things. Uh, but for the most part, though, for the most part, though, it's solid gameplay. It's it's a solid first-person shooter. Even though you're not shooting, 
Well, you are shooting film, but that's another story. So, there's not a whole lot I can fault this game on the gameplay. I mean, the major issues I would have come in the concept. But from a gameplay standpoint, I'm giving this a solid 4 out of 5. It's not a great control. It doesn't make you feel like, oh, God-like. But at the same time, though, it does well enough so anyone can jump in and start having fun with this title. This is where we come to the fun factor. And I had a decent amount of fun with Pokemon Snap. What's cool about it is, is that there's stuff to uncover. There's always something that you're going to miss. And so you're going to keep going through the same level, same level, same levels, trying to find, and there's a limit about like eight levels in this game. So it's very few levels, but you're still going to be going through it and finding Pokemon shots that you either missed or you know you could do better on it. And so it, it, it's actually cool. It is actually cool that you can do that. And it's short enough, the levels are short enough, where you can play two or three here and then shut off your N64 and call it a day. You don't have that drive to keep playing long, long, long campaigns. This is a quick, you know, couple and done. Or one and done. So I did have a lot of fun with this. I also had fun trying to figure out uh, where I can go and where I can unlock specials. Because if you know how to hit Pokemon in certain ways, you can unlock new areas. And that's, that's sweet. I did personally have a lot of fun with this one. So I'm giving this 4 out of 5. Morals. Moral aspect of this, okay, it's, it's wildlife photography is what it is. If you have an issue with wildlife photography, maybe you think the camera steals souls? I, I really can't give you a, an issue I would have specifically with the active photography. Now, yes, you're throwing apples, pokeballs, and poke flutes to get the characters to dance and whatnot. You know, maybe you're saying, hey, we can't interact with them. I'm stretching here, guys. But then, of course, there is always the Pokemon argument. Because some people consider some Pokemon to be dragons, some Pokemon to be demons, stuff like that. Mythological creatures. If you have issues with that, obviously that's, that's a good case right there to say that you wouldn't want your kids playing it. Me? I think Pokemon are just cute little anime creatures that, I don't know. I I didn't grow up on Pokemon. Pokemon didn't actually get popular until I graduated high school, um, although I played the heck out of it. But at the same point in time, though, you know, I, I really can't fault much for Pokemon. I think it's decent enough to where this would be a family-safe, family-friendly game, um, especially since there's no real battling or anything going on. It's just animals in their habitat doing what animals do. So, from a family-friendly moral standpoint, I'm giving this a 4 out of 5. So, Pokemon Snap, as our review comes to a close, we're giving this game, let's see here, essentially it's going to be a 3, technical number, 375, so we could give this a 3.5 out of 5. And I think Pokemon Snap, as it would go today, well, it's a decent enough game, I don't think everyone's going to like it, though. And while personally, I would give it three and a half stars out of five, uh, I think Pokemon Snap is at a time where Pikachu fever encompassed everything. And maybe there's a little nostalgia in my, my fun factor with this. But the concept itself is, is a real wait, because I don't think people are going to have as much fun today doing this. Now, if they were to integrate the Pokemon Snap features into Pokemon Go. So when you're out and when you're out and around, and you're take and you're taking trying to catch Pokemon using your GPS, I think that would be cool. I think that would be cool. I think if modern Pokemon games would do that too, because I mean, heck, look at X Y. Now, now what is it? Sun and Moon. Then what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Stone and Rock or Water and Pancakes? I don't know. Yep, but there we go. Pokemon Pancake and Waffle. I want to see Pancake and Waffle Edition. But overall, though, I mean, I haven't seen them integrate anything like this into a core Pokemon game. I would like to see that. Pokemon Go would be a great place to start. It's, it's a cool concept, cool feature, but as a standalone game, though, it's just not one I can't see people flocking to as much. Uh, so even though the numbers add up to about three, three and a half, is what I would say, I just don't see it there as being a huge one. It's more of a history lesson at this point. Moral Gamer, though. Hey, moralgamer.com. Uh, don't forget, 
we got our support link down. Make your Amazon purchases in the support link below. Helps us out. And we will catch you next time. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Catch you around. Okay, I'm not going to shoot Moltres now. Come on, fight. You two, battle for your food.